that is very big that I want to spend as much time as possible with you and then get on to the subsidiaries. The branches of this story is one from the Miami Herald that most of you haven't seen or probably uh, any of you, most people I know, don't take it, but the minute the Iran-Contra affair happened in November of 86, I started taking the Ma Miami Herald every single day. This is a story about HMO. Uh, HMO is Health Maintenance Organizations, and it's titled HMO Czar Charmed the VIPs. And this is about a gentleman um, who had this uh, HMO, which is a health maintenance organization. His name is Mike Ricari, R-E-C-A-R-E-Y. And through some very important people, and I'll tell you their names, he became the largest recipient of Medicare funding in the entire United States, in Florida. The taxpayers, you taxpayers out there, were giving him $30 million a month, $1 million a day, Mike Ricari. And I'll tell you the people that got him the contracts, but he never could live up to the contracts. He was running a scam business from the very beginning, so he fled the country with his daughters and um, left $11 million in debts and goodness knows what else. And the people helping him were Jeb Bush, the son of the vice president, the son of the former CIA director, Lynn Nofziger, the same gentleman who's going to trial for lobbying for WedTech and lobbying for Fairchild, John Sears, Reagan's former campaign manager until William Casey came in, Glenn Ford, the actor who pitched for Rick Carey, Paula Hawkins from Florida, Ron Brook, an aide to Governor Bob Graham, and Claude Pepper of Florida, a Democrat who was interested in hospital care and got the contracts for Rick Carey. Now, this man, gentleman came from Cuba in 1961. His uncle was a very prosperous doctor there, Rick Carey. His father was in export import with Batista. They did very well in Cuba and then left Cuba to come to Florida. And uh, Rick Carey wanted to carry on his uncle's hospital plan, whatever it was in Cuba. I wasn't aware that Batista had such a wonderful medical clinic or plan there. So he used lobbyists to get him contracts with the Health and uh, Human Services in Washington, D.C. And the person he used was Jeb Bush, one of the persons, the son of the vice president. But the scandalous part of this story is that when this gentleman first began getting into business, when uh, Miguel, Mike, uh, nicknamed or Kerry, began getting into business, he was suggested, it was suggested that he go to none other than Santos Traficante, the mafia boss, and Robert Vesco for his seed money for the hospital plans. Now, this is a little mind-boggling, not if you think of Lynn Nofziger, uh, his career with the crime syndicates and the mafia and raising money for these campaigns, but the very persons that were asked to put up the original money for this character, uh, Santos Traficanta and uh, Robert Vesco, uh, were notorious in the intelligence community field. Santos Traficanta was hired by the CIA, along with John Roselli, to plan poisons to kill Fidel Castro. He headed up those assassination squads, and in the Christic Institute suit, it begins with Santos Traficante and Roselli meeting with Robert Mayhew and setting up the so-called secret teams that weren't so secret. Now, Jeb Bush, the son of the vice president, I keep saying that, uh, has a job in Florida. A, a, uh, he works for the state of Florida. He called Mr. McLean Haddow, the former head of health and human services, and he asked Mr. Haddow, to please realize the solid background of um, Rick Carey so that he could get these contracts, the largest single Medicare contract in the United States. And he didn't mention the original funds that built the hospital that Rick Carey started with or the approach to Mafia boss Santo Traficante and Robert Vesco and the head of Health and Human Services gave the go-ahead for this $30 million every single month. Uh, Margaret Heckler replaced Haddow. And she found Jeb Bush persuasive. This is at a time when the father is saying he wants to stop drugs. And he's down in Florida campaigning against drug traffic of all hypocritical things. And his son is uh, calling Health and Human Services and tilting the board to get contracts for a person 
whose seed money came from Traficanta and Vesco. As I say, he called Margaret Heckler. She replaced that out, and she said she found Jeb Bush very persuasive, and so she changed the conditions whereby Ricari could get his $30 million a month. There was a catch in the amount of patients he'd have to have that were not uh, regular Medicare patients, 50%. He got a three-year uh, uh, putting off avoidance of using 50% of the patients that weren't Medicare, and by having them all Medicare, he got a hunk of money, all this profit, that he began to get a million-dollar home and expensive cars. And then Jeb Bush called Kevin Mole, a top official in Health and Human Services, and later Mr. Haddow, who signed the waiver for Kerry, got $38,000 as a fee, and there were payoffs also for these great services. Uh, this story is one of a huge scam that involves the anti-Castro Cubans coming to this country, and it also, it, it not only the mafia seed money, but what is terrible about it is that they automatically got contracts for all of the Cubans, 10,000 of them, to coming into this country to get medical care through these particular hospitals and also for thousands of Haitians. And Traffic Candy was hired to give poisons to Fidel Castro, and I'm wondering if these hospital plans had anything to do with the massive amount of AIDS that showed up with blacks in Florida, the Belgades area, or what would happen to these people when they came in, and how is it that all the Cubans, 10,000 and the Haitians, got immediate medical care at hospitals run by this cast of characters with their notorious background when hospitalization in California costs 15, 14, $1,500 a day, and uh, all over the country it is horrendous, who in the federal government was deciding that the Haitians and Cubans would get instant medical care and it would go in the hands of Mr. Ricari? This is a shocking story, and I'll take a one-minute break and get back to the other uh, part of this story, some more details about it. This is WedTech South, and there hasn't been anything on the wire services about the whole story. A rundown quickly uh, of the way the article is written in the Miami Herald. It tells how Jeb Bush, uh, when he called in Washington to Health and Human Services, never mentioned Rick Carey's being in jail, never said he had chronic trouble paying bills, that there were bitter lawsuits against him in the state of Florida, that he was a bad risk. And uh, Jeb Bush was pushing for this particular character. I can't imagine why. The article says Rick Carey was indicted on charges of bribery, wiretapping, and he quickly got passports for two preschool children, disappeared, left the scandal behind, and three people from his organization have been indicted and are facing charges while he disappeared. He left three associates who were convicted of bribery. They paid union leaders to try to direct their union health care and their contracts to their company to bolster what the private sector would be because they couldn't bring in people from the private sector and then it turned out the bribe wasn't necessary because be, with Jeb Bush and Lynn Knopfsicker and Mr. Sears uh, campaigning for this guy, uh, they got their waiver anyway. And so that uh, this special lobbying actually wasn't necessary, but they've been charged with it. And as I say, he has left the country. Now, this all came to a head just uh, this last summer. In um, 1987, Ricari left, and in April of 87 is when in Miami it first came to a head. And I noted that uh, very conveniently, as soon as the Iran-Contra affair came down, that many of the witnesses were dead uh, uh, from the CIA uh, as soon as the story began to break. And one of them was Santos Traficanta, who died March 19, uh, 1987, and it was with one month or so when publicly the story linked him to Jeb Bush, Lynn Knopfsiger, John Sears, Paula Hawkins, and Health and Human Services and Traffic Canada. Sure, he was 72, but he and uh, uh, Mr. Lansdale and a team that were working with the Iran-Contra outfit conveniently all died. Uh, Mike Burke, heads of the CIA, within a very short time when this affair was getting unraveled, including William Casey and Admiral Moreau and uh, Cyrus Hashemi, a team of uh, 13, 10 or 13 that I'll put on the air soon of major witnesses, traffic candy was gone. Now, this story tells how Rick Carey always wanted to uh, have a hospital plan, uh, that he had worked hard on it. He'd, he had seen his uncle in Cuba 
running a clinic there. So when he came to the United States, he thought he would try to build up a hospital and get a clinic, a set of clinics going like his uncle had in Cuba. And in 1970, there were hospital scandals. There was embezzlement of 200,000 from a hospital. He was in charge of the books and nobody uh, said anything about it. He wasn't apprehended or even a suspect where the 200,000 went, even though he was in charge of the books. Then he forgot to pay his income taxes and the IRS caught up with him in 1973 and he spent 30 days in jail. Then a local a doctor's group wanted to build a new hospital near the Golden Glades Interchange and they needed money according to this story. And the investors offered Rick Carey to be in on the deal if he would approach mafia boss Santo Traficanta and financier Robert Vesco for the money to build the hospital. Well, with his father and uncle and all their family coming out of Batista's Cuba, but they would know traffic Canada, surely even people like Frank Sturgis of Watergate fame or from the Grassy Knoll. He was the keeper of the games table down one of the gambling places in Cuba. And with the Cuban contacts and traffic Canada and Besco's contacts in Cuba and then for the intelligence community, uh, they asked him to approach these persons, and it's very important to remember that Arthur Lyman of Iran-Contra uh, hearings uh, has a client named Robert Vesco, the same man who was supposed to investigate the Iran-Contra affair, very nicely left out all the drug connections and the scandals, and this could be a very powerful reason why this story hasn't come north of Florida, really not breaking the headlines, and it should, Arthur Lyman is the attorney for Robert Vesco and also Willard Zucker, the banker who does work for the National Security Council, for the Special Delta Forces, for Secord and Hakim, and the secret team who harbors away their $8 million over there in Europe from the weapons deals. Willard Zucker is also a partner attorney representing uh, Robert Vesco. So Vesco's name appears now in this article and in this story, along with the notorious Lynn Knopsicker, the lobbyist. Now, the uh, paper in uh, Miami had a chart, who gains and who loses. And they have a picture of the cast of characters, and it tells about Lynn Knopsicker, who was lobbying for this hospital plan to go through, and he got 400000 for that. And being as he's the man who moved in the White House to redo the whole sub-cabinet, along with Helene Von Dahm, uh, from TCI and from California to make over the far right underbelly of the entire Reagan administration in key positions. Uh, that's pretty heavy duty stuff for a man down in Florida to be able to get Lynn Knopfseger paying him 400000 And then he got John Sears, who was the Reagan campaign manager until William Casey came in for the hard knuckle fighting and the stealing of Jimmy Carter's papers and the sabotaging of the Iran rescue, hostage rescue and all the Shenanigans, John Sears is a lobbyist in Washington to get the president's campaign manager and Knopfseger, the advisor to the president for the past 20 years. Uh, Sears got 300000 and Knopfseger got 400000 And then another guy who gained from this was Ron Book. And he helped work for the uh, medical companies trying to get their deals through. And his offices got a large amount of money they charted out. A very good article uh, charting out the people and the law offices that got uh, so much money, Ron Buck, at $1,750,000 in fees for this matter, pushing people to get these hospital plans for, through for this recary. And that must really be some character. I wonder when he'll surface or if he ever will, or he'll join uh, the floating uh, circus of Frank Turple and Robert Vesco and Mr. Mike Recary. So Rick Carey started his first hospital. Uh, it, he got control. It's called the International Hospital. He only put 4000 in. That's pretty good. He put 4000 to start a hospital and ends up with $30 million a month from the federal government. Then he was involved with another lawsuit. Investors, some sided with him. It was an angry lawsuit, and they che accused him of cheating and lying and lining his own pockets with company medicine. We talk about privatizing the medical community, and Mike Riccari got a $50,000 loan, interest-free loan from the hospital, and he built a condo for himself. He put 2000 in his own condo, and he sold it for 500000 By 1970, he had a small empire, 